My purpose for being here is to demonstrate the operation of the compactor and also some safety features with it. First thing you should always do when you're looking at a new piece of equipment is familiarize yourself with the buttons and switches and things that are on the compactor. So we'll just go through and review what's on the machine here right now. Right here you have a manual, um, off and then auto. This here is where you will use to control the operation of the compactor in which mode you want it to be on. The middle one is a start button. This you will also use to set the auto cycle, which I'll demonstrate in a minute. This is a stop button. If you push the stop button in, it'll stop the machine, no matter where it's at or how it's running. It's a maintained button, so you always want to make sure if you come out here and the machine's not running or something happens, always make sure that button is pulled out. Otherwise, the machine will not operate. You have a reverse button down here if you need to reverse the blade for some reason while it's operating. These are warning lights here related to uh, the auto and also full circuit and part full circuit. This little button here, all this does is reset the motor overload inside the control cabinet. If for some reason it's not working, you would want to push that button also. That will reset the overload so that it will uh, so that it'll operate if that is the problem. This here is the alarm on the top that makes the sound. There's also then a light here, and this will be demonstrated in a minute. We'll uh, show how the, the auto is related to the auto circuit. So we'll demonstrate that in a minute. You want to pause? So just finishing up on here, this, this tower here is related to the auto circuit. And this is a horn on the top and then a light here. And I'll demonstrate how that works in a minute. Just want to go through some more of the safety features. On the machine, there's a limit switch right here, and this is on the loading door. When you open the loading door like this, the compactor will stop, also like it did with the stop button. No matter what position it's in, it will stop. So if you, and also if you hit, well, I'll go through that in a minute. And then there's also a, a photo eye right here. This is when it's in auto circuit. This photo eye will start the compactor when it sees something going through the light. It will take about, there's a delay of about 15 seconds when it's blocked. So after it's first blocked, it'll, after 15 seconds, it'll start the compactor and operate as long as everything is set properly for the auto feature to work. Um, this is just a door latch here, opening and closing. This is just for access, like if there's a jam or somebody wants to throw some trash in here on the ground. But you have to remember, if you open this door, you have to then reset the auto circuit. So you don't want to open this door very often, because then you have to go through the auto start circuit. circuit. Um, if for any reason there's a jam or anything in here, um, I would recommend um, locking out the disconnect so that it can't be automatically started or start for some reason. You want to make sure that uh, you know, all the safety things are done so that nobody gets hurt. So let's go through the operation. <clears throat> so if this switch in manual, this this compactor will go out. If you push the start button, it will go out and compress, and then the blade, press it, flatten, whatever you want to call it, it goes back and forth in there. It will go out, make one, and then it will go out, shift, and then come back and shut off. That's how the manual circuit works. This will probably make three strokes before it shuts off. So mainly where they use the manual side of it is when you're maybe clearing a jam or something like that, where you just want to run the compactor back and forth as you're pushing debris down, you'll be using the manual to operate the compactor. Okay, so when you want to put in the auto cycle, you're going to turn it to off and then to auto. Now OSHA requires that you have to hold this start button in for like 20 seconds. 
before the compact row set itself for the auto. So I'm going to hold it in. While this is holding in, you're going to hear the horn and the light will be flashing. And 20 seconds seems like a long time when you're holding this button. Now once the machine starts, you can let up on the key switch and it'll make one stroke and it'll come back and then shut off. And as long as this light's flashing, that means that it's set in the auto cycle. Oh, it's going to make three strokes. I'm going to shut it off after two strokes just for time. So like I say, once you push that in, it stops the machine like it just did. But always make sure you pull that back out. And the machine won't start. If it was running and you stopped it with the stop button, when you pull it out, the machine will not start until you either put it in manual or reset the auto circuit. So looking up here, you'll see this, this part right here. I mentioned this earlier, the photo eye. This is what controls the auto feature of this compactor. It has two lights on it, a green one and a yellow one, or amber. When this reflect, when this photo light sees itself, that amber light should be on. So you want to make sure that amber light is on. If the amber light goes off, then that means it's blocked for some reason. Either trash, or because the reflector is dirty, or the photo light is dirty. And we'll talk about that in a minute. I'm just going to hold this until it starts. All right, so let's go back to the photo eye here. So the photo eye has two lights on it, and a green one and an amber light. As long as that amber light's on, that means that the, the photo eye is seeing itself. There's a reflector on the other side, so it sends out a beam, the beam bounces back, and as long as the photo eye sees that beam, then there'll be the amber light on. When the machine gets blocked, uh, either with trash, or if the reflector's dirty, or the photo eye's dirty, then an amber light will go off. I'm going to block this and show that the amber light went out when I blocked it. And then there'll be about 15 seconds delay in here that's built into it before the compactor will start. So there it'll start. It'll run. It'll run. As long as it's blocked, it will continuously run. And Whenever the debris clears, then the next cycle it will shut off. As long as this is blocked, this machine will continue to run. It has, a, I think, a 5 or 10 minute run time on it. So if it runs longer than 10 minutes, the machine will automatically shut off. And then this auto shutdown light here will come on. And that means you had something happen. Either the machine jammed or it ran too long, so it automatically shut down. And it'll make three strokes. Whatever it clears, whatever has started the photo, the photo line, it'll run three strokes and then shut off. So maintenance things on this machine are watching the fluid level on the tank, which is kind of hard to see on this one. Um, but if you'll see oil on the ground or some kind of liquid on the ground, it could be an oil leak. Uh, it might also be just trash juice that's just leaking on the ground. These things are not watertight. So if you get a lot of trash, somebody drops down a bunch of liquid, it will spill out onto the floor. Um, just a reminder, as long as this light's flashing, then your auto circuit is set. If you push the stop button, turn the key to the off position, or open this door, the machine will, will stop the auto circuit, and then you'll have to reset it. Just some things to remember. Um, going back to the front panel here, this middle light here is a full and 75% light. 
If the light is on constantly, always on, it's, it's full. If it's on 75%, then it's flashing. Once it gets to 100%, the machine will shut down and this light here will come on. And it will not pack any more trash in to the uh, container. Um, I think that's about all on the controls. Unhooking and hooking the container. Um, when you're bringing the container up after it's been outside, this flap, you can see this flap right here, it'll be down. You want to bring that up, hook the chains on these hooks right here, then you're going to position the, comp the container into the compactor. You want to make sure that it goes all the way on, like it shows right here, the gap between the container and the compactor. There's a very little gap there. That means the container has made it up to the compactor properly has this handle here. This handle is used to, to release and to connect the compactor. Right now it's connected. It has this little lever on it right here that controls where, where it catches these gears here. When you operate this thing, you're going to want to put the weight of the release. And when you start cranking this, it'll start to lower this piece of angle here until it gets down below the container that is, that is holding on. So you have to you have to push it down quite a ways. You can see now that this angle here is down below the slip right here. Then you can pull the container away when it's full and when you bring it back in you're going to line everything up like we talked about and then you're going to move this lever the other way. And then you're going to crank it up. snug it up you don't need to crank on it really hard just snug it up and then that'll keep the container attached to the compactor if you don't do that make sure it gets kept caught properly if you just catch it a little bit what will happen is sometimes it'll start packing trash the container can pop off and then you're just going to start packing trash onto the ground because it, it will push the container away and then just you're just going to have garbage and trash just dumping onto the ground I've seen where they push the container out eight ten feet and it's just making a mess. So you want to make sure that gets latched properly. You'll, you'll be happy you did. Um, as far as jams go, you will get jams in these things sometimes because debris coming down will get crooked in there or something or just doesn't fall right. And you will get jams in these things. So you want to watch that um, just to make sure that, uh, you know, there's nothing really you can do about that because people will throw stuff down there sometimes that, uh, is too big or just has an odd shape and it will get caught. So jams will happen. Um, I can't really think of anything else on these things. Just like I said in the beginning, always make sure you familiarize yourself with the controls so you know what's going on. Um, the auto start is the flashing red light. That means the auto cycle is set. If it's not, then it will only work in manual or you'll have to reset the auto, the auto cycle time. Um, maintenance. The photo line needs to be cleaned periodically and the reflector that's straight across on the other side of the compactor. They need to be cleaned. And maintenance wise on that is a daily thing. It could be an hourly thing depending upon what kind of trash is coming down the chute and splashing up onto um, the photo line or the reflector. So if this thing is down here, you come down here continuously running or the auto shutdown light is on, it's probably because the reflector is blocked with debris or it's or it's dirty and it, sh it shut itself down. So you need to clean the reflector and clean the photo eye. Now also these have kind of a built-in safety thing. If these lights are flashing, it means that it's, it's kind of seeing the reflector but it's not really seeing it. And so what that's telling you that the, either the photo eye or the reflector need to be cleaned. So just that is a maintenance item. And like I said, it can be a daily thing, an hourly thing just depend on what kind of debris is coming down the chute. So that does need to be wiped off with just a soft cloth. A little bit, of, if it's wet, that would even help. Um, but it does need to be cleaned off. So those are about the only things with this thing that uh, you're probably going to have a lot of attention to is this photo eye getting dirty. And then having to reset the auto circuit periodically because of stop button opening the door. So, other than that, they're pretty simple. They're designed to just run, but they do have maintenance. And of course, changing out the container when it gets full. And then resetting the auto circuit.
that's it.